I mean, we see this quite a bit on the brand and marketing side, especially in multifamily. You know, there's there's deep roots and, and sometimes longstanding relationships in place. Um, even if the work, let's say, quite isn't up to the standard or up to par or or even better, you know, where it needs to be. Yeah. Do you face yeah. headwinds and, and challenges like that as well? I would say we do still, but I would say a lot less than what I found of positioning the power of it when you have that congruity with your marketing and your messaging is all in line and you can literally state, you know, we help urban multifamily developers create immersive rooftop amenities and outdoor living experiences. And that is like to your core who you are then. And there's, there's no real other comparisons. It makes it, I guess the perception there to a developer or a future prospect would be these guys seem to really know what they're doing. Right. And so there's a perception there. And I would say that's the biggest thing that I've learned is the perceived value of what we can add to them. Even though we're a, you're going to pay a premium to hire us, we're, we'll actually save you more money because of our expertise in executing it well. That by even, it seems counterintuitive, but pay you a higher fee. It might even be a more expensive project, but the investment you make is a 2x, a 3x, a 5x return on your investment and the peace of mind that a developer would have. So it makes it easier for them to make that decision because they feel like they know you already. And then the sales process, like we kind of alluded to, it's a lot more like, I just view sales as more of conversations. So we like to have what we call value conversations with our clients. And by doing that too, we're also separating ourselves because we're asking the questions that maybe a lot of others don't we're less order takers and we really are trying to be expert and going okay because we understand we see all these paths as being experts in this space when you do enough of anything you start to recognize patterns and you start to go okay you really have like true insights and so the questions we're asking are like we really do care about their metrics we care about their goals like what what's going to be a home run what's at stake if you don't get this right you know like questions like that are things we're asking we're asking them to look to the future and go, hey, three years from today and you're, you know, we're meeting together and you're really happy. What's happened for you to be really happy on this project? Mm. And it causes them to think. And if nothing else, they can see these guys seem to really care about our goals. They're not just going, OK, what right. what amenities do you want? You know, let, we're not order takers right. and just like, going to regurgitate those. It's more like, let's understand where you're coming from. Why are you doing this project to begin with? Mm. Um, since we've been doing that and then off also offering pricing options to where the question in their mind is less about how can we engage or less about who should we engage and more about how should we engage Loft 64 because we're presenting options for them of like, here's option A, here's option B, here's option B, op option C. They get to kind of pick instead of, in, in, at least in my industry, it's more of a lump sum or just like, it's an ultimatum proposal where it's more of a contract that they right. have priced in there the clients don't even care about all that. They're looking to see what's the bottom line. Um, but what we found in our proposals too, is that we're focusing, trying to focus more on those goals. Like they can see that we've listened. They can see that we actually care about what they're going to do. We understand budgets. We understand what we call a value assessment of how to value a project um, or how we can add value. So they can see this is truly an investment. It's not just we're going to, we're not invest. We're not going to just put money into, uh, amenities just because they need to check the box. It's more like this recipe of how we're going to help them, um, in their overall project, get, uh, achieve the goals that they want or the goals that they've set out to do, you know, like they can see us as yeah. a valued partner and a collaborator. And it kind of lowers that, that barrier that sometimes they put in thinking a designer, if I tell them my budget, they're going to just design to that budget or they're always going to exceed it. Cause they're, you know, they don't really care about what we care about. They're just trying to do the cool design so they can put their name on it and it can be an homage to them. 